So I'm going to start off today by asking everyone to close your eyes, please. Close your eyes and imagine you are in the deep, dense Amazon rainforest. Imagine you are a jaguar, the top predator, the creature which dominates the entire rainforest. Walk, prance, climb like you have the strength and confidence of this majestic beast. Open your eyes. That sense of confidence and strength and just vigor that these animals give off and that these people live with is what the, indi the local indigenous uh, tribes in the Amazon live with. Uh, in my experiences in the Amazon, I have taken away many things from these people. I've learned many lessons, but the most important thing that they have taught me is to appreciate what I have, appreciate the life that I'm given, appreciate what we all have here. My first trip in was beautiful. It was breathtaking, exquisite. We saw all kinds of life. We saw the beautiful trees, the beautiful rainforest. And actually, I actually got a little sick the first day, not from something uh, other than the air. Because the air was so pure, I was not used to breathing in that pure air that it, I guess it just shocked my body or something. <laughs> my first journey consisted of me and a team of about four others visiting eight different indigenous communities. These different communities welcomed us, welcomed us and wanted to learn about what we knew about our knowledge about the government and the government's issues with the petroleum industry. One of the members of our team was actually a retired oil man who had previously gone into very remote communities such as this one and talked to the indigenous and kind of, in a sense, tricked them into taking money and a couple of health benefits for their land, their oil, and pretty much exploiting their culture. This story and hearing what he had to say about this ignited a small little spark inside of me. That exposure to something, to the sense of exploitation and hurting, hurting of the planet and all that kind of stuff, it, it really just rooted somewhere deep down inside of me. And that's what, that was the initial moment when I knew I was hooked. The, over the course of the trip, we, we realized many things. We were all exposed to this brand new side of the, side of the, just other side of the forest, I guess, because we had always been, we're always, we live in a mind of always being savvy for money and petroleum and gas, how, it, uh, how everything survives off of that. But in reality, this, this sense, of, uh, sense of community was what we were after. After two nights, after the, at the end of our trip, we were offered a two-night stay in my friend Jose's community, very deep in the Amazon. Deep in the Amazon where he offered to show us what pura vida was, pure life. He wanted to show us the animals, the insects, the life that all thrived uh, around his community. And in those two days, I really did live the two most pure days of my life, seeing these people, seeing the communities they had, seeing the life and just breathing that air. On our last day, he offered to take me on a walk, on a hike, a three mile hike, which I thought nothing of. I was proven very wrong. A three mile hike in the Amazon is not a piece of cake. You're walking through trees and foliage and mud and all kinds of stuff. So getting to the destination, seeing the macaws, the poison dart frogs, and then rehydrating was something very special to me. And then I realized that we had to return. The return, <laughs> That was a whole nother story. It was, I was kind of pooped out walking back, but 20 minutes before we returned, he saw that I was kind of down and I was pooped and I was just done with it. And so he stopped and he held a small little ceremony. Little did I know that this ceremony would be when I would be given my Achuar name and I would become a man in the eyes of their community and the world. Shakaim. Shakaim is the name that I was given. It is the, he is the protector of the forest and all the beings inside of it. That's a pretty big responsibility for a little LA boy like me. <laughs> but I took it to heart. I took it to heart. I was given the responsibility to fight and love for the forest, for the people. And my goal is pretty much just to share with you guys what a phenomenal place it is, the people, the thriving community, and what it means to me and what it means to them. Uh, as Shikaim, I vowed to always advocate them, advocate the fight against destroying our planet, and to fight for the people who are actually fighting on the home front, who are the indigenous. 
Last summer, I felt it was necessary to share this gift that I was given. I wanted to share the experiences that I've had, so I decided to bring seven of my closest friends, two of which, Hayden and Jamie, are right over there, so you can ask them any questions afterwards, uh, on a trip to view the beautiful country of Ecuador, to see the beautiful, diverse biomes that it housed. And the last portion of the trip was actually the Amazon portion. Seeing how beautiful the Amazon was, I need to share this. And so that Amazon portion consisted of us all taking a small little commuter jet, actually not a jet, a little prop plane, deep into the Amazon onto a little dirt landing strip far from view of civilization. Upon arriving, we were greeted with complete open arms, big smiles, and just a complete sense of welcome. This sense of welcome is what I really wanted to show them. That sense of welcome that there was no judgment. We got there and they accepted us for who we were. They wanted us to experience, they wanted us to see the beauty in their culture, and that's what I thought was the most important thing. The vibes in this community were some of the most unique I've ever felt. The positivity and liveliness reverberated off the trees, the foliage, the soil, and even the insects. And any negative feelings or pessimism was all washed away by the afternoon showers or the torrent of the Amazon River. In conclusion, I would like to ask you all just one thing. Just go for a walk, whether it's today, tomorrow, whenever, just go for a walk, whether it's in the city or on the trails, and just look at the organic things on our planet. Look at what Mother Nature, Mother Earth has provided for us. That is something very important. All these communities, whether not, not only the communities deep in the Amazon, the communities in Antarctica, the communities in Africa, all over these indigenous communities that live in these very remote places, they get to see that. They get to see what pure life is. So even if you just focus on one tree, that will give you that sense. I really do look up to these people because they have a sense of community, a thriving community full of happiness, laughter, and in times of despair, they are all unite, united. It is a surreal feeling being out there, and I believe that in the future, we will look upon them and we will call upon them for advice on how to make such a thriving community, how to unite all of us together to make one big community as opposed to a whole bunch of separate ones, which is what they're doing. They're calling to action. They're all asking us to be united to save the planet that we love. Uh, please help each other and stay true to this planet uh, that we love and protect it. Please continue to raise awareness. Thank you.